What's up, everybody? My name's Encore, and this is your daily reminder that tomorrow never comes. What does that mean? That means that none of our tomorrows are guaranteed, so we need to stop putting off what we want to look at or do tomorrow or some distant future and get it done today. <clears throat> and for me, and this channel that pertains to the crypto space, the crypto world, the crypto arena, this is something, in my opinion, that needs to be taken you know, that needs to be looked at, that needs to be uh, researched, do your own research, educate yourselves. But it's a must. It's absolutely a must. Nothing I say is obviously financial advice. But again, in my opinion, okay, if there's any, if there's any way to mold, change, shape your financial future, the best chance you have today is through the crypto space. All right, this is, as Brian Rose would say, this is the greatest dislocation of wealth in human history. And it's something that needs to be taken advantage of. Okay, so having said all of that, if you've heard of crypto, if you're interested in crypto, if you're dismissive, dismissive of crypto, you've probably caught headlines that just really push forward fear, uncertainty, and doubt, or FUD, as the crypto space will call it. And the headlines will just throw neg negativity after negativity. And so what I want to outline today is we want to go over today's price, some different things about the fear, uh, both from a, from a price action point and, a, and a, a mentality standpoint, and then also go through the fundamentals. I'm all about fundamentals. Price action is not indicative of fundamentals. And that's a very key point to note and something hopefully I can kind of guide you guys through. So let's kind of jump in here. So I'm going to move myself out of the way and we're going to get started here. So this is not, this is not a technical analysis type, you know, channel. It's not my forte, but I have some experience with it and some things I just want to point out that, you know, if you ever see anyone uh, doing this, especially when it comes to uh, fear or, um, you know, technicals that kind of point to, not a good thing for Bitcoin or the crypto space, which is true and legit. I just kind of want to run you guys through real quick on this, okay? So this here is a Bitcoin chart, and this is on the monthly chart, all right? And so I'm not going to get heavy into all the indicators, but a, a, a pattern that's looked at as a negative pattern here is an M pattern. So here you go. That's one M right there. So not a good sign. And the longer the time frame, uh, the more relevant the information or the indicators point to. Okay, so that's an M pattern. That's not a bullish sign for crypto or in this case, Bitcoin. And if we go to the weekly, let me get rid of this. Go to the weekly here. You have what's called a head and shoulder. So there's the head. There's one shoulder. There's the other shoulder. Again, another bad sign. Uh, in terms of uh, bull versus bear, this would be a bearish sign. And then if you look at the overall, again, that M pattern stays there as well. And then if we kind of fall into the daily pattern, you guys will see again, let's clear this up. You guys will see the exact same pattern. We got a head and shoulders, so not a good sign. And then we got one big M, not a good sign. Okay, so, so this is legit. This isn't... Um, you know, if, if anyone's saying uh, based on the technicals, things don't look good, that's that's 100 percent accurate and, and no one's denying that. OK, so but again, these charts are going to show you price action and price action, the price charts. These technicals really is, um, you know, really is a measurement of human psychology. And that's something that Scott Melker, the wolf of um, all streets, uh, put it in a very, a very relevant way and kind of put a flashbulb for me. That when we're reading these charts and these and anyone's reading these charts, you're really reading uh, human decision making, right? Visual observation of it. So you can see where people sold, you can see where they bought, and really where the emotion is kind of playing out in the chart. So right now, all of the emotion is fear, fear, fear uh, for Bitcoin, and, and Bitcoin will kind of dictate where the market, the, the entire crypto market goes. So just further along with fear. Uh, there is something called a fear and greed index. There's a traditional one, and then there's one I, I ran across here. And this one really takes out, and you guys can see it here. So unlike some other indices, we do not include price 
or prices or volatility. Uh, so that what they're really capturing is the social fear and greed. And it's just, just the sentiment, the general sentiment, uh, you know, across social media and whatnot for, you know, in this case, cryptocurrencies. And, you know, there's all kinds of things that are floating around here. But, but they have something that, again, runs from zero to 100. And the lower the score, the more fear. So you guys can see here, fear, fear, fear. And then if we get into the green, you know, we're getting into the greed side of things. And, and this was astounding. I mean, we're looking at a 0 0.62 score. I mean, that is as close to zero, you know, as we've probably ever been. So something interesting I just ran across. Even I wasn't familiar with this. Uh, but it was something interesting to see that just from social sentiment alone, how heavy the fear is in the market. Okay. And then if we go to the traditional fear and, uh, fear and greed index, we can see here today that we're sitting at 11 right and again you'll see it's the last updated today january 23rd and just extreme extreme fear going on in the markets all right we and i'm gonna go through the little history here but any again anything in the red anything low on zero to 100 is showing fear anything higher up into the green is going to show you greed in the market all right so i wanted to kind of point this out here this here is a let's move myself out of the way this here is that greed and fear index just charted over a certain period of time, okay? And I kind of wanted to just highlight how this works and how they correlate. So right here, the, the yellowish orange line here is the Bitcoin price. And then the blue lines here is the actual fear and greed index, okay? So remember, zero to 100 is the fear and greed index. The closer to zero we go, the more fear, the higher the score, the more greed, okay? So when we look here, the highest point was in uh, right over here. We're looking at November 8th, November 9th. We're looking at Bitcoin sitting around 67, you know, 67K US. And the fear and greed index was 75. Okay, very high. So that means the market was very greedy. Uh, everyone was uh, high on Bitcoin, high on crypto and wanted to jump in. So there was the greed there. OK, and then even if we look you know, further out in um, April of 2021, you know, we're looking at 63K Bitcoin price and the fear, uh, fear and greed index is actually higher. It's at 79. OK, so I just wanted to show where that kind of correlates for it, uh, how this kind of correlates out here. And then if we look here as of January 22nd, uh, we've got well January 23rd from what I showed before as well. And the 22nd, we have the fear and greed index around 11. And this, this has Bitcoin price around 35, 35,000 US, and it's, it's actually dipped a little bit lower to the 34s. So I just, I just want to show you guys, you know, um, kind of how the two match. The, there was a social aspect of it, but then here is the, the direct correlation with the uh, price points as well in terms of the fear, fear and greed index and the crypto and the Bitcoin price. So really, things are at almost all-time lows. They actually are at all-time lows on this index and so there's just a lot of fear in the market lots and lots of fear in the market but what i wanted to show you guys here is now the fundamentals and really even if we look at price point okay even if we look at price point this was something that was highlighted and, and it's, it's it's something that everyone kind of needs to take into their minds here so we're talking about 35,000, 34,000 being extreme fear in the market right things are just dumping everyone's panicking but if we look on this day last year, and this was uh, posted by, well, he's changed his name to the floor here on Twitter, but he goes by the Moon Carl, very, very prominent um, influencer of the crypto space. And he actually posted something very relevant here. So, so this is yesterday, January 22nd. And if you look a year past on that very day, Bitcoin was at 33,000, okay? ETH was at 1,200. Currently right now, as ETH is so-called tanking, it's sitting around 24, 2,500, okay? Uh, Cardano here was 35 cents. You know, right now it's, you know, just under $1.10. Uh, BNB was, you know, Binance here was is, was $40 last year. You know, even as this dropped significantly, it's sitting maybe in around four or 500s, 400s maybe. So all of these, we won't go through all of them, but all of these were significantly lower last year than this year, and yet everyone's talking about the fear um, and crypto markets, you know, going to zero for everything, and it's a scam and this and that. So even though 
from a fundamental standpoint, I try to ignore price point. If you were just to look at price point alone, you would see that from where we are today to where we were exactly one year ago, prices have increased as well. And, and Bitcoin has, you know, it's about the same, a little bit higher, and everything else has, has you know, gained significant momentum. So just from price point alone, things are in a much better position today than they were a year ago. But for me, like I've always said, fundamentals, 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 right? And you guys got to look at, uh, I've said this before, uh, you have to look at what people are doing, what entities are doing versus what is being said, whether it's the media or those same very entities that are participating in the fundamentals but saying a different narrative, right? And, and if you guys have heard, Michael Saylor, CEO of a public company called MicroStrategy, probably one of the, not probably, is the biggest Bitcoin bull out there. Uh, and just, just from his company alone, I mean, if you guys look here from June of 20, uh, June 21st of 2021, they own $3 billion worth of Bitcoin. Okay, that was June of 2021. And then you're looking in November of 2021, they doubled it to 7 billion. Okay, then if you look here, December 30th of 2021, they added another $94 million worth. So they just it just continues. And he's, he's been on record saying that Bitcoin is not something to sell. It's something to own and pass on for generations and generations and generations. So he's definitely a, a big Bitcoin bull and puts his money where, the, where his mouth is. The next one here is uh, billionaire investor Bill Miller. He said he's put 50% of his personal wealth in Bitcoin. I mean, you guys got to understand, th these guys, this guy is a traditional investor, right? Made his chops uh, investing in, in the traditional markets. So these guys are very smart and not loose with their money, not loose with their, their, their finances and their financial future. So for someone of his stature now to put in 50% of his personal wealth, it's quite a big deal, right? The next one is Ray Dalio. Everyone, almost everyone, if not everyone knows or has heard of Ray Dalio. He's also another billionaire investor. And he says, and he's conservative, right? He's a very conservative man. And his approach is very sound. And he's on record saying that, you know, allocating up to 2% of your portfolio to Bitcoin is reasonable. And this is, we're talking about January 5th of 2022, right? So I showed you guys the high in November 8th or 9th of 2021, and things have kind of fallen since. So even in, in uh, what, January, so two months later, almost two months after the fact, he's still saying it's 2% of your portfolio is reasonable. Now, 2% may not sound like a lot, but these guys have hundreds of millions, billions of dollars in assets, some even trillions. And so 2% is quite a big allocation for these companies and for the crypto market. So this is kind of what we're looking for. And this doesn't even, you know, I'm not even talking about the Kevin O'Leary's, the Mark Cuban's and all these other, you know, very, very wealthy individuals responsible for uh, funds and, 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 and having the network of other, uh, you know, very wealthy individuals and entities you, you guys kind of see that there's you know these savvy investors these these guys who are very experienced are rolling into crypto so even though the price may be falling even though there may be a lot of fear uh from from retailers the general public and 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 mass media these guys are putting their monies where their mouth is or putting their money when they don't speak at all right so you need to see that when we talk about the NFT space, and, and I still have to release, you know, kind of what NFTs are and how they work and why they're important. But just just even to highlight, like Time Magazine, you know, this is, I mean, one of the oldest um, companies around in terms of magazines. And uh, I definitely remember reading Time Magazine back in the day as well. But they're getting into NFTs. Netflix is also getting into NFTs. Uh, you, you, now, here's, here's something that was posted just this week alone. So this is from January 21st. Remember, price is hitting, right? The fear is hitting all-time lows. Well, the fear and greed index is hitting all-time lows, meaning the fear is quite high. But look at here. Google's launching crypto products. Facebook and Instagram are integrating NFTs. Twitter's introducing NFT profile picture formats. Walmart's trying to get into the metaverse. You've got Adidas. You've got Nike's getting into the metaverse. There is so much that's happening 
there's so much that's going on with the fundamentals, how these big, big entities and individuals are getting into the space. Meanwhile, mass media is telling you a different story. So there, there's a huge discrepancy between what the general public hears and what's actually happening behind the scenes. And so the last one I want to share with you guys is a you know, large um, company here called BlackRock. And if, if, if any of you have been involved with real estate or in stock, investing in general, um, you'll definitely have heard of BlackRock. And they just filed for a blockchain ETF. So it's not a Bitcoin ETF or Ethereum ETFs, which those have been proposed and, and who knows when or when they will be approved. Uh, but this one is strictly a blockchain and tech ETF. So again, I have stressed fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. And we talk about Bitcoin, we talk about ETH, and they seem like you know people think about them as currencies, but they're technology plays. And they're ushering in, and ushering in a new type of technology that's here to stay, and that's the blockchain technology. So BlackRock, which is the world's largest asset manager. Okay, think about that again. World's largest asset manager. Probably some pretty intelligent people in that in and around that company. Um, they actually have around ten trillion dollars of assets under management. So again, imagine two percent, as as Ray Dalio would say, right? Significant number. And so they're getting. I mean, they've been in the space before. They they have their uh, couple of funds as well. But now they they're, they're proposing a blockchain fund. And it's just unbelievable that that the amount of attention, the amount of understanding that's starting to happen in these legacy plays, right? These institutions, these major institutions, it's all happening under the waves. And, 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 and most of the media is not seeing that or, or doesn't want to release that to the general public, right? Again, I've mentioned Facebook, Google, Twitter, Netflix, absolutely. And then if you think about, and then right here, the CEO of this particular company, Black Bronc, in October, even he said that digital currency is here to stay and it has a place. Okay. And, 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 he, and I, you know, I, I do remember seeing that interview as well. And I do believe he said that he has uh, invested in some form or fashion, how much we don't know in, in the crypto space. So guys, you need to understand fear as at all, an all time high, but the fundamentals have only gotten better and better and better. Okay, I hope this guys. I hope this has helped you guys understand the difference of what we hear and what we see versus what's actually happening. I hope that that spurs you guys to do a little bit of research, do a little bit of digging yourselves, and really start understanding what's actually happening. Okay, hope that helped, guys. We'll see you in the next one.